In 1993, through a historic amendment to the constitution, the Indian state ushered in a paradigm shift in local governance. The amendment mandated that Gram Sabhas or People's Assemblies at the village level will be held routinely for citizens to raise demands before their representatives. It also brought in quotas for women, Dalits and minority groups in the composition of local government. Two decades after this experiment in deepening democracy, a million women have been elected to local government or panchayats in rural India. But a vibrant women's constituency has not yet emerged at the grassroots. The mainstream political culture continues to be male-dominated. It is also becoming increasingly entrenched in organized corruption. Elected women members are sidelined routinely in the formal proceedings of the panchayats and ordinary women's voices are completely silenced in the village assembly. <laughs> Our project, Making Women's Voices and Votes Count, has attempted to address this ground-level impasse, preventing the realization of participatory democracy at the grassroots. We have sought to reconnect elected women and their women's constituency through a unique set of ICT-enabled strategies. We saw a need to introduce gender-related concerns into the panchayat, concerns about women's rights in general and also about women colleagues to male members of the panchayat. Sessions on digital photography and video became a great way to do this with least resistance. The project used tablet PCs with preloaded content to share perspectives and generate debates. The camera in hand can be a magic apparatus. It transforms not only the woman's perception of herself and her self-worth, it changes the way men look at women. Elected women were trained to handle for the first time the much-coveted panchayat camera for routine official documentation. The most difficult and yet the most important aspect of the project was to create a shared space, a forum where elected women could listen to and address the issues of women from their constituency. Audio-video learning resources were used extensively for this purpose and networking meetings became a cornerstone strategy. Our weekly radio broadcast on FM allowed women's collectives to keep up a progressive discourse on gender in local governance, articulating what women's citizenship means in the local context. Finally, information centers run by women's collectives have been able to circumvent elite control channels so that marginalized women can access public information and services. Networking elected women leaders with women in the community was not easy. Marginalized women have little faith in local governance processes. They tend to see the People's Assembly as a farce. The need for a separate all-women village assembly or the Mahila Gram Sabha to restore women's hope in local democracy became increasingly clearer. Our perseverance and persuasive tactics convinced three panchayats covering 25 villages to organize such Mahila Gram Sabhas. Once the Panchayat fixed the dates for a Mahila Gram Sabha in their area, an intensive media-based campaign was undertaken. Meeting reminders were announced on the radio broadcast and on the day of the meeting, women received a personalized reminder as a voice SMS through an IVR system and discussions during the Mahila Gram Sabha were captured on video. The Mahila Gram Sabha has helped women place their collective demands. In Tumsoge village, women were critical about the lack of transparency in individual subsidy allotments under a sanitation program. 
As a response to this demand, IT for Change undertook a GIS-enabled social audit to identify beneficiaries of the subsidy. Findings were then placed in front of the panchayat. While exposing corruption is not easy for poor women, social audits can provide a strong basis for contestation. We now plan to take the GIS findings back to the community. The Mahila Gram Sabhas have now been notified by the government as mandatory. Our project has demonstrated how such a forum can be true to women's visions of participatory governance. Indeed, encounters between elected women leaders and their female constituencies are not free from friction. But what we found is that our efforts to build the trust did make a difference, at least to some women. <laughs> The innovations of making women's voices and votes count have been widely appreciated. The director of the National Mission for Empowerment of Women visited the project site and commended the women who have been part of this process. We hope to see the strategies being tried here taken up for wider replication, she said. Political transformation in the true feminist sense is a project for the long haul. As new women leaders emerge, new efforts must happen.